Hi everyone. Today is World Sleep Day, that is on 19th of March. These are 10 very easily doable uh, tips that have been shared by World Sleep Society. And in this short video, we are going to be discussing only about the fourth point, and that is create a caffeine cutoff time. So now in this video, I'm going to take you through a story of love and hate relationship that coffee shares with sleep. Now this flow chart must be able to give you a brief understanding about what coffee does to your sleep. So a person who drinks coffee, especially uh, late in the evening or in the night time, there are high chances that he gets disrupted sleep. Now, when a person is not able to sleep well, it is natural that he would face daytime sleepiness, lethargy, not able to focus and concentrate well on the next day, etc. So in order to take care of all these things, he would again drink coffee and that would make him feel good, make him have a feeling of increased energy. So let's just see some quick coffee facts. Caffeine is the most widely consumed psychoactive substance in the whole world. A psychoactive substance is anything that can alter your mood, your behavior and how you feel. About 100 grams of coffee would contain 40 milligram of caffeine and a typical one cup of coffee would contain 95 milligrams of caffeine. Now, of course, this would depend on the size of the cup, the strength of the coffee, the type of the coffee, etc. But roughly, it would contain about 90 to 100 milligrams of caffeine. Talking about the absorption of caffeine, it quickly gets absorbed by the stomach and the small intestine so quick that the peak levels of caffeine in the blood reaches within 30 minutes after the consumption. And the half-life, that is the time taken for the initial amount of caffeine in the body to get reduced to half, varies anywhere between two hours to 10 hours. This would depend on a lot of external as well as internal factors of the person who is consuming it. But on an average, the half-life of caffeine is uh, uh, nearly four to five hours. So if you're drinking coffee at about six o'clock or even by about five o'clock in the evening, you would still have caffeine, half the amount of caffeine circulating in your blood, even at 10 p.m. of the night. Coffee and sleep. What does coffee do to your sleep? It prolongs the sleep latency time. That means the amount of time that you take to fall asleep. It also reduces the total sleep time and it reduces the sleep efficiency. It reduces the quality of your sleep. These are all researched facts and you can find the links to the research papers in the description box below. So how exactly does this happen? How is caffeine bringing about so many changes in the sleep pattern? We have a new character in our story and that's the neurotransmitter adenosine. Let us see what this has to do. When this neurotransmitter adenosine adheres to the adenosine receptors, it stimulates the release of GABA that is gamma amino butyric acid. And this actually makes you feel relaxed and pushes you towards sleep. Now the issue is that the structure of caffeine is very similar to that of adenosine. And caffeine having a very high affinity towards the adenosine receptor, caffeine goes and attaches itself to the adenosine receptor, but it does not activate it. Meaning, there is a lack of reduction of the neuronal activity which is otherwise caused by adenosine. 
So the neurons continue to be active, meaning your brain continues to be active. And when your brain is still in the active mode, your pituitary signals the adrenal glands to produce adrenaline. Now, what does this adrenaline do? It keeps you active. It uh, helps keep you up with your focusing power. Another thing that caffeine does is it stimulates and increases the release of dopamine in the body. Dopamine is a feel-good hormone. So it is good that it helps release dopamine. But the problem here is due to this, people easily gets, get dependent on coffee. That's how the dependency developed and that's how coffee addiction happens. Now, what is the take-home message from all of this? If you ask a yoga naturopathy doctor, any one of them would say no to caffeine, no. But then if you're really going to take it or if you have to take it, make sure you don't drink coffee or anything that has caffeine in it at least five hours prior to your bedtime. Because the half-life of caffeine, as I told, is uh, uh, four to five hours. And you definitely don't want to meddle with your sleep because sleep helps rejuvenate you, revitalize you and get you fully prepared for the challenges of the next day. Thank you for watching.